The time is just after half past 11 on this Saturday morning. It's the 13th of August. It is a beautiful day around the Northwest. Whatever you're doing, enjoy the good weather because God knows when we're going to get it again. And whatever you're doing, do it safely as well. All right, for all you movie buffs out there, I'm glad to say finally we are joined by the one and only Mr. Colly McFadgen who's going to talk us through all the latest comings and goings uh, in the world of movies and cinema and what's coming up over the next month or so. Carly, good morning. Good morning. It's great to be back on. I know we're we're slightly out of sync, but, you know, yeah. it's all worth it that I'm finally here. I, even though, as you said, let, we, we mentioned the elephant in the room straight away. She said, the weather is beautiful. Yeah. Nobody's going to the cinema, at least during the daytime at the moment. But <laughs> as, as, the, as the weather forecast on Highland Radio said, uh, it's going to end soon enough, so enjoy yeah. it while you can. Come Monday. And, come Monday. Come Monday. will be full again. <laughs> yeah, we'll be packed. So we're going to give you some tips about what you can look forward to. Because there's always, you know, a, every cloud has a silver lining or in this case, a silver screen. Exactly. And there's plenty, there's, there is, in spite of the good weather, there is plenty yeah. on offer at the cinema at the moment. Well, well, it's noticeable that, you know, because the weather is good, but the evening shows are still uh, going very well. And I think that's because of the quality of particularly, you know, grown up films. And <clears throat> one that we talked about a lot um, last time we were on, at the start of July was where the crawdads sing. And we were saying that, really anticipating it. If you remember, I actually went and bought the book uh, because, yeah. <laughs> because we're talking about it so much. It just happens to be here. And just after we went off air, I did something I never do. I read the reviews before the movie came out. I oh, usually don't do that. Right. And they absolutely slated it, Rory. And I was going, oh, God, I was on our Highland radio telling yeah. everyone how great this would be. <laughs> but you know what? People have loved it, Rory. It's absolutely jam-packed. People who've read yeah. the book and people who haven't read the book have really enjoyed it. So it just goes to show you that, you know, maybe if you're someone who watches 10 movies every week, yeah. your tastes are very different to people who just go the odd time and for a beloved book. So Where the Crawdads Sing, we, we talked about it last time, and it has turned out to be a really successful uh, a story about a, a girl who has to raise herself in the, sw in the mm. swamp. But I really thought maybe the people who love the book wouldn't like it at all. But it turns out, everyone loves it. So and that's still going what's strong. What's the verdict? Book better than the film? Film better I, than I, the movie? I feel the, the book is... The book? I feel the book is always better than the film. And because mm. it's a book about somebody being on their own, that's easier to do in a book. Because in a movie, they, they have to say it out loud. Yeah. Gee, I'm awful isolated. And that sounds corny. <laughs> but aside from that, and it's Daisy Edgar Jones, who we know from uh, normal people, practically Irish. Yes, anyway. yeah, yeah. And she's absolutely brilliant in it. So that's really good. The other one we talked about that hadn't come out, that has come out since, is Bullet Train. Oh, now, yes. Summer, I feel, look, I love the fact that we have these really clever, smart movies mm -hmm. like Elvis and Top Gun and, and full of action, full, but also very smart. And we're going to talk about a really weird movie, Nope, in a few minutes. But one of the things I loved about Bullet Train, Summer should also be about dumb fun. And this is dumb as nuts. But I actually <laughs> really enjoyed it. Like, it's people quote philosophy while beating seven uh, levels of tar out of each other on a Japanese bullet train while dressed up as Japanese mascots. Plot, yeah, it's not really important. <laughs> what it is, is about Brad Pitt looking cool and, and fighting people. And it, it's one of those things, you know, you see some people yeah. going into it and you go, you're not going to enjoy this. And then you see other people going in and you go, you're going to have the time of your life. So if anyone just wants like, you know, we, you know, it's been a long couple of years. Yeah. We've, you know, we all had, uh, you know, both lockdown brain, COVID brain and so on. If you wanted to leave your brain at home and go to a movie, yeah. I would recommend Bullet Train. Leave the, look, it's very warm. Leave the brain in the, in the fridge. You won't need it at all to watch this movie, but it's just action packed. And like, it's kind of, it is very violent, but in a cartoon way, okay. a bit like John Wick meets Snatch. But probably I not see. as good as either of those movies, but it's a summer dumb blockbuster. I had a really good time. Again, critics didn't like it at all, but I just thought it was good, dumb, silly fun. Well, let's have a listen and see what's in store for us with Bullet Train. Here's a clip. I am Fantastic. ready. No more sociopaths. I'm a maniac. You put peace out in the world, you get peace back. I think you might be forgetting what you do for a living. Do you have um, anything sparkling? No more to got. Sure, you want to talk this out? No. Okay. Between us, it's a wall. A negative foul leads to a negative outcome. Do you think there was a little head trauma? Maybe. Bullet Train, exclusively in cinemas.
Yeah, so you, you can even hear from the trailer, even without the visuals, exactly yeah. what you're, <laughs> what, what's in store for you. You hear the way talking, you hear exactly. there, you, some people will recognise very famous female voice there. Did you know who that was? No. May, well, I don't want to reveal it, but there's loads of cameos here in this movie. Loads of people turn up for 15 seconds. You go, oh, look at them. So it's that sort of fun, uh, uh, silly movie. Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt's having the time of his life. He just is enjoying it. And, you know, he just looks so cool and great. You know, and you kind of go, how old is he? Oh, my God. You know, but it, it, it's great fun. Not for everyone. It is dumb. It is silly. And uh, as I said, that's sort of cartoony violence. Yeah. But I think I think some people will enjoy it over, over there. Brad probably at the summer. stage of his career as well where he doesn't have to be picky about the scripts he chooses anymore. So he can just decide, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do this yeah. because I like it. I enjoy it. It's a bit of fun. Uh, exactly. There's yeah. a famous story about, uh, I think it was Jaws 4. Michael Caine was sent the script and he was thinking, I'm not going to do that. And he opened the script and said, it opens up in the Bahamas. And he said, I'll do it. And I, I have a feeling <laughs> Brad Pitt kind of went, hey, yeah, load of my friends in Japan running around. Yeah, why not? Why that not? sounds like Nothing fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. So that's Bullet Train. That is, that's in cinemas now at the moment. That's in cinemas now. Also in cinemas now. I like to talk about Nope. And I said Bullet Train would be a bit divisive. Yeah. <laughs> now we're talking divisive. Yeah. This so is one nope. actually I saw. I spotted the trailer for it. Uh, there's, there's TV spots running for it left, yeah. right and centre now. I spotted it. It immediately grabbed my attention. Yes, I was one of the big uh, Super Bowl ads. And it's yeah. by a guy called Jordan Peele, who made his name as a comedian, and then has made a couple of horror movies called Get Out and yeah. Us, yeah. which are really different, you know, specializing in the sort of, I suppose, the black American experience with mm. horror and so on, and just a different tale. And one of the things I love about him, he was offered truckloads of money to make sequels to them. He's going, nope, pun not intended. I'm going to make <laughs> my own original stories. And this one... I don't even want to say too much about it because you saw the trailer. It grabbed your attention, mm. but you hadn't a clue what was going no, on at that's the, the same thing about it. You're looking at it and you're like, okay, I get it. There's a little bit of sci-fi slash fantasy in yeah. here, but that's yeah. all you get. Let's have a listen yeah. to what's in store for us with Nope. Did you see a UFO in that cloud? Yeah. Nope. I ain't never seen yeah. nothing like this. No. No. That's all you get from it. And even that, in that, you, you know, there's a lot of directors who have nothing to do with the trailers. Yeah. I know, without knowing for a fact, Jordan Peele is all over that direct, yeah. that trailer because of the use of music, the strangeness, the oddness of it. And like anyone like you and I who love their music as well, going to really enjoy the use of music in this movie. And <clears throat> look, let's just, just say, so Daniel Kaluuya, who's fast becoming one of my favorite actors, is a rancher. There are horse wranglers for Hollywood. They give animals mm. to Hollywood and they're kind of being replaced by green screen. Uh, it, you know, instead people are going, ah, it's much cheaper to do a CGI horse than actually yeah. hire people to bring in a horse. Yeah. So that's, they're running a ranch and there's something strange going on in the ranch. People will know a little bit, maybe it's something kind of UFO sci-fi, but don't believe everything you've read. And I really enjoyed this. I thought this was, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't mm. know where it was going. And then when you kind of find out, you have a choice. You can go, all right, okay, it's weird, yeah. but I'll go with it. Or you could be like, a story I often tell about my, my, my dear cousin, Mary Delords, who was watching Empire Strikes Back, and she could take it all until they land in a cave that's not a cave. And she goes, no, I don't believe that. And I remember having to say, well, maybe, you know, all the magic space warriors, you could have left it yeah. uh, at, at, at that. So... If you're going, if you're going to watch a movie like Empire Strikes Back or anything of that ilk, you sort of have to suspend. <laughs> yeah, and, and also, she was about 10 at the time, and I've told that story about a thousand yeah. times, which is de deeply unfair. I'm, deeply sure unfair. I'm sure she'll thank you for oh, that. She, yeah, well, she <laughs> lives in Adam She may be listening. She will beat the life out of me. Okay, but, so um, that's, um, that's nope. So that, that's, nope. In cin cinema that's a nine. definite yep. Yeah, and it's a definite yep from me. Okay. Although... Like sort of M. Night Shyamalan, I know we have to move on, but uh, mm. like M. Night Shyamalan with movies like Signs and The Sixth Sense, there are people who are going to come out of this and go, nah, nah, what? not with that at all. I hate yeah, it. Not for and me. their companion yeah. is going to say, no, 
I totally got it. It's great. It's yeah. one of those you'd be talking about it in the pub afterwards. I really liked it. Okay, cool. That's nope. Okay, that's in cinemas now. And what have we got next on the list? Okay, so coming out next week was something that was a big uh, hit a couple of years ago. It was Fisherman's Friends, and you probably know it. It's one of those movies. I think the Brits do particularly well, like Calendar Girls and Military Wives. These true stories then uh, with a bit of fiction. So it was all the Cornwall singers who were singing uh, sea shanties that suddenly became hugely popular. People will remember the, the meme going around about the Weller Man. And they became mm. a big hit. I think maybe they were on Britain's Got Talent or something like that. They right. could be a big hit. And they made a kind of Hollywood version of the movie, thinking it'd be small. It was a massive hit. So they're back again. We've got Fisherman's Friends too. And, you know, I'd be only mildly interested, but they've added in, you know, I have to stick up for my Dubliners, <laughs> Imelda May. Ah. Imelda May comes in as a pop singer. And, you know, not only is she great, she's a fabulous singer as well, and she can sing all styles of music. And it's the lads, after they have had a bit of fame, like every band, they've plucked from obscurity. Yeah. They were they were all fishermen who suddenly got all this fame thrown at them. And they're not really dealing with that well. Now they're with their newfound celebrity. Okay. And how are they going to do it? And this is just a nice, fun, I think it's one of those, you bring your daughter and your mum to you know, one yeah. of those enjoyable for, for, uh, family movies. Okay, let's have a listen to what's in store with Fisherman Friend. I'm here to pick up 15 passes for the Fisherman's Friends. Catering passes are allocated at the trader's entrance. Oh, no, it's a Fisherman's Friends are a band. I thought you were talking about the cough sweets. <laughs> what's it like sharing a record label with Lady Gaga? <laughs> According to her management, she's well chuffed. <laughs> <laughs> The Fisherman's Friends have a new album ready to roll. Moby Dick and the Whalers are not on message. All they said was, does she like me? They're a pasty. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, he, that's, you know, it's the opposite of the Nope trailer. As, as yeah. intriguing as the Nope trailer <laughs> was, you're going, what the hell? I think everyone listening to that goes, okay, okay. I, I know, know exactly what I'm in for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it, it, it's that movie, you know, and as I said, I think the... The Brits make this sort of normal person becomes famous how they deal with They do this one particularly yeah. well. The music's going to be really good, even though, you know, Sea Shanty's not my thing. Yeah. But I, when it's sung so well and from such, they put a lot of work into the soundtrack because I was reading about it earlier. And it's just going to be really nice. And kind of maybe an end of the summer before school comes back, before all the stress uh, starts again. Yes. And, you know, a really nice family day out. And that opens uh, next Friday, so the 19th. 19th and it's going to run and run for a while, I think. Yeah. And it's family friendly as well. So as you say, you know, a family day out, a feel good movie, a feel good story, one for, one for the whole family. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, everyone's going to love it. There's, there's a couple of scenes where one of the older fellas, you know, has to, is trying to go to like Plilly Crackness course because stop people calling people darling and so on. Oh dear, people are going to love it. It's just funny and sweet and, you know, slightly tongue in cheek. But no offence, no harm to anyone. I, I think mm. people are going to really enjoy that one. It's not going to change the world, but it's going to be really enjoyable. Okay, that's great. So that's Fisherman's Friends 2. That is hitting yeah. theatres on the 19th of August. Collie, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, when are Always you back? pleasure. We're back next month. Uh, have, have, do you know if there's anything, any big movie events coming up uh, over the Co next couple of months? A couple of massive ones. There's going to a movie called Miss Harris Goes to Paris. I think it's going to be really enjoyable. Okay. Uh, there's an Irish movie called Russia and Frank. I can't wait to see. But most of all, Michael Flatley's Blackbird. The movie they said was never going to be released because it was too bad is coming out in the <laughs> second. Movie. The only thing that look it'll either be brilliant or it'll be rubbish. Either way, I will love it. And either way, just, people will just, flock to see it yeah, ju just I, to see Michael Flatley. Does he Michael fall Flatley. flat on his backside or does he? <laughs> exactly. The only thing that could be disappointing is if it was all right. Either be yeah. great or be rubbish. We're going to enjoy it. Yeah. As we they don't said, want friends, any middle ground with this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fellow who scares the Jesus out of Joey from Friends has finally made his movie. Five years we've been waiting for this one. It's going to come out. So that's going to be the first on the agenda next month, Rory. I can't wait for it already. Yeah, looking forward to it, Collie. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next month, all right? Always a pleasure. Bye. Cheers. That's Collie McFadgen there uh, talking us through all the latest offerings in the world of movies. And he'll be back with us next month. We look forward to that. Time for a commercial break. Here, what's the story with Ruth and her zero alcohol beer? Maybe she's doing dry January. She's a bit late. <laughs> Could be on antibiotics. I'm not sure Ruth is fit as a fiddle. Maybe she has an important fiddle recital? Nah, that was last week. It wasn't bad, actually. Got the car with you tonight, Ruth. 
No, I don't. You never need a reason to enjoy a great